What's up everyone? Today we're going to be looking at exponential versus Poisson distributions. Let's get into it. Both of these rely on something that we need to discuss before we can get into the intricacies of both these distributions. And that's the fact that the data generating process for each one of these is called a Poisson process. And what does that mean? There's kind of three main factors that go into something being a Poisson process. Let's look at them. This first one says that the average time between events is not only known, but it's also constant. It's not changing throughout the day or throughout the experiment. This next one says that arrivals or events are totally independent of another. This leads into the memoryless property, which is a whole nother topic that we could discuss. But basically, the previous arrival and the next arrival don't affect the arrival that we're looking at specifically. Now finally, by saying that events cannot occur simultaneously, we say that there has to be a time interval between events occurring. And this allows us to think about that tiny time interval as a Bernoulli trial. In other words, within that interval, an event can either happen or not happen. It can be a success or a failure. This actually allows us to estimate the binomial, which is a series of Bernoulli trials using the Poisson distribution. Now that we have this groundwork, let's look at the difference between the exponential and the Poisson distributions themselves. So as we do whenever we start a problem, we need to ask ourselves, what are we trying to find? For the exponential, that question is how much time occurs between a given number of events. That could be between the ninth and the 10th person arriving or between the fifth and the 10th person arriving. It doesn't have to be just one event. Now this is where we can really see the relationship between the exponential and the Poisson. The question the Poisson answers is how many events will occur in a fixed time interval. Now as usual, Asking the question allows us to figure out what the random variable represents. So for the exponential, because we're answering how much time occurs, we know that the random variable is going to represent time itself. Now, because time can take on an infinite number of values or an infinite number of decimal places, we know that it's continuous. Now for Poisson, because we're answering how many events occur, the random variable is going to represent the number of events. And because the number of events cannot take on any value, in other words, we can't have three and a half people arriving, we know that this is discrete. Now that we know what the random variables represent, we can understand what the parameters of the distributions themselves represent. I'm not going to actually write up the formulas because I don't really care what the PDF and the CDF are right now formulaically. Rather, I care about understanding when to use each distribution. So the parameter for the exponential function, in other words, the only thing that the exponential function relies on is something called lambda, and that re represents a rate of arrival or a rate of occurrence. And because it's a rate, we know that the units are going to be one over time. In other words, five customers per minute arrive. Now for the Poisson, we're also going to use lambda, but it's going to represent something different. And so this is why it can be tricky to keep the two straight. So our parameter is the expected number of occurrences. And if you remember back to the three principles we talked about of a Poisson process, the first is that the expected number of occurrences or the average is actually known. So the average, maybe we measure that empirically, that's what this lambda is. What we expect the number of occurrences to happen in that time interval. So the average number of occurrences, in other words, the expected, actually represents the entire distribution. If we empirically measure how many customers or how many flaws occur per interval, then we parameterize the distribution just like that. So the units for this, it's tempting to say um, it's the number of arrivals or the number of flaws, but that actually is unit less. So where time is measured in seconds, when we're measuring a count, it doesn't have a unit. Now before we wrap up, I want to mention some cool facts about the exponential distribution that maybe you don't know because they're usually skipped over. 
So first of all, the exponential is a special case of the gamma distribution when the shape parameter is equal to one and the scale is equal to one over the random variable. Now this is my favorite fact about the exponential. So it's actually the continuous analogy of the geometric distribution. Now if you remember from my other video when we talked about the geometric distribution, we said it's the time until the first event occurs. Well, if we think about exponential, it's the time until the next event occurs. So if we start at a point and forget about everything that happened in the past, which we can do because it's memoryless, we're just looking at the time until that next event occurs, which is basically the geometric, but it's the continuous version rather than discrete, where discrete looks at the number of events, exponential looks at the number of seconds or the, the amount of time that goes by. Thanks for watching, and I hope you got a bit better understanding of the exponential versus the Poisson distributions, as well as what a Poisson data generating process is. All right, I realize I don't have any fun facts for the Poisson, so bonus content. It's actually not pronounced Poisson, it's pronounced Poisson. It's French, named after a French guy from the 1800s.